Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we have lots to do. We have eggs to sell. We have cotton to harvest. I took a, a cotton harvest on field 70, uh, which is the largest field in the game. So we'll get that going. Uh, let's see what else. We got chores to do. We got hay to cut, and we have field 68 to spread slurry slash digestate on. So lots to do today. I think what we'll do is let's get started with the cotton harvest. Uh, oh, actually, before we do that, let's take a look at uh, October's finances. So we're gonna go here. Uh, so in October, we spent 106 bucks and 196 bucks on the spud shed, or I shouldn't say spud shed, the beet shed that we put in place. So that's where that money came from. We spent a whopping $42,461 in vehicle repairs. Man, we, we need to start thinking about getting some newer tractors. I'm thinking, I don't know. Um, leasing costs 67,000. The majority of that came from leasing the sugar beet equipment, uh, for, to do our field property maintenance about the same production cost is a little lower. Uh, we made $4,527 in sold bills. I thought that was more like 6,000, but I guess it was 4,000 because I accidentally sold some of the bales that I wanted to keep, uh, because I was using auto drive to drop it off. Uh, let's see, we made $101,344 on greenhouse sales, $1,600 in fuels, $620 in water costs. Uh, biogas plant brought in $63,902, a little bit lower than last month, but still pretty good. We made $62,731 on contracts. We paid a whopping $25,869 in wages, primarily, again, from the big sugar beet harvest. $944 in miscellaneous. I don't know where that came from. Loan interest. And uh, 6631 in delivery production costs, which basically represents what we pay, <clears throat> excuse me, our, our employees. Uh, I'm, I changed that to 1.5, and I think that's a little bit more of a reasonable number than what we had it before, which was two. That leaves us at um, $203,805. However, we do owe the bank $200,000. I had to borrow a lot of money uh, in October because I was short on cash. We had to buy seed. We had to uh, borrow more money to pay the workers and stuff like that. So we are going to pay the majority of this loan off right now. And we should be able to pay the rest of it off after we sell our eggs. But let's just leave ourselves um, somewhere around that much money. So we still have to pay 30000 off on the eggs. Okay, so, uh, or with the eggs, I should say. Let's hop into the cotton harvester. We're going to get this going. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're just going to turn this loose with course play and let it harvest the field the harvester will drop off uh can i get across this bridge i don't maybe <laughs> oh wow that's tight okay we got it <laughs> uh anyway the harvester will just drop the bales off just like it as if it was you know like a hay baler and then uh we can come along later on and pick up the bales with the bale loader I did try to do this at one point with auto drive and course blade. It just didn't work very well. So, I mean, course blade works fine for the harvesting part of it, but the picking up of the bales and the delivering of them doesn't work too well. So I'll, I'll probably just do that manually myself later on. Um, we, I, I was able, actually able to get auto drive to deliver the bales. The problem is the bales are so big that it can't get both of the enormous bales in the delivered area so i still have to run up there anyways and and fix it you know so it's probably just going to be easier in the long run for us to do it ourselves i probably won't try and keep any of this uh just because we we have wool coming out our ears we don't really need cotton in our spinnery um in real life of course there's a big difference between wool clothing and cotton clothing but in the game and it there's no difference it's the it's the same so uh, okay let's get on to the field here uh, just so it's on the field just kind of get started a little bit all right and then we will go into course play uh, make sure the working width is correct which it is and we're going to go to field 70 oh we didn't even have a folder for field 70 well let's create that Okay, so now we have a folder for field 70, and then we want to open the course. No, not the course editor. 
I want to create a new course. Okay. Uh, so we'll go why isn't it oh is it not it must not be far enough on the field because it's not detecting a field there we go okay that's what we wanted all right let's find field 70. um it's gonna take quite a few passes for headlands um with the size of this header probably i'm gonna say probably around 30. Let's try 30. Headland smooth. Yeah, all that's good. Generate the course. Let's see what that looks like. This is going to take a while, but the good news is um, the AI is going to take care of it for us. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, now let's go here. Let's go to field 70. Save course. We will call this F70 uh, cotton. And I'm going to also... Go square because it's the square bales as opposed to the round bales. I don't like the round cotton baler at all. Um, it's twice as much money, like eight hundred thousand dollars, twice as much money, and it's just harder to work with in my opinion. So I like the square um, baler or harvester. Okay, so that's set up. Make sure you start at the first waypoint, and yeah, let's just let it do its thing. And uh, we don't really need to do anything at all it'll do the whole entire field it'll drop the bales off and we'll just come back at the very end and pick those bales up okay so we got that going let's head on back to the ranch here uh, i suppose we could get the truck and the cotton you know the bale pickup trailer down there too so let's do that so it's out of our yard but again i probably won't do anything with it until the very end of the harvest Oh, I don't have my head tracker turned on. That's all right. Don't worry about that later. Okay. We'll just leave the truck parked here, and we'll come back later. All right, next thing we want to do is let's get our um, hay going on our property. So we'll jump in the crone and get the big M going here on the hay. Uh, we want to load 53, 54 spiral hay, activate. First waypoint, go for it, man. Okay, we got him taken care of. Let's see, what's next? Uh, we need to get, well, I'm gonna have to do the slurry slash digestate spreading myself um because it just doesn't I had some problems with course play doing that correctly uh so so we got to get the chores done too and that uh why don't we get started with the slurry first so that means we want to get to the fent that's the new holland there's the fent and we'll go grab our slurry trailer or um, not trailer, tank, spreader, sprayer, applicator, thingy, <laughs> tank. Um, and we're going to actually use, we're going to use digestate this time because I don't even think we have enough slurry in the cow barn for one full tank. And I'm going to look at something else too while we're at it. Um, let's get hooked up first. Um, so this tank, I think this is a 30,000 liter tank. Let's check that. Uh, yeah, it's a 30,000 liter tank and the cows have, uh, yeah, they don't have quite a full 30,000, uh, liters of slurry. So let's head over to the biogas plant and load up with digestate because we have lots of digestate. I think we have... Something like over 300,000 uh, liters of that. Oh, 401,000. Yeah, nice. I really like, one of the things I really like about the biogas plant is it 
it creates that digestate very quickly in comparison to our small cow barn. Um, and then we can use it, of course, for fertilizing. So it's really cool. All right, let's go get some. I'm creating um, a little auto drive path to the digestate load area too, because we're going to have to probably load up several times to get this field done. So let's take it and eh, maybe a little further, like maybe to here. That should be good. Okay. We're going to call this uh, digestate load. Digest taste load. All right. Good. Uh, now let's turn that off and let's back up and actually load the digestate. And then what I'll do is I'll loop this into the field 68 load target. Okay, we're going to need to get an applicator. Uh, we will lease that as usual. Uh, let's go in to sales oh man that would be sure be nice to have this front loader but we just we really don't need it and that's for sugar cane planting which we don't care about okay so let's go to flurry tanks and because we're doing 68 we're going to get the biggest applicator this is a 36 meter applicator we're going to lease it of course it's going to cost us 6300 bucks which isn't terrible and yeah we get the big boy this time just because we're working on what I think is probably the second largest field in the in the map. There we go. It shot me up into the air and then it wouldn't work for some weird reason. Okay, so I confirmed that we could get to field 68 load up to this point. So let's just... Yeah, it looks like he's going to be able to get there. Why are you going that way? All right, hold on. Something's weird. Let's get this turned around. Okay, now let's see what happens. That's looking better. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go for uh, getting to the loading point. Before we get started, just out of curiosity more than anything, I want to see if it will... Uh, can get back to, <coughs> excuse me, get back to um, digestate load. It looks like it has a path there. Okay, good. Um, we're going to cut it though right here. Fantastic. All right. Let's get this thing unfolded and we're going to use a uh, guidance steering for this. Because, uh, like I said, it's just, I, I tried to get it to work with course play and it did not work very well. It wasn't able to to work with the the massive width of this thing correctly and so it was leaving gaps and stuff and so it's just gonna be better if we do it ourselves. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Alright, so let's go into here. And we want to do auto width there. We want this to be called field 68, a 36 meter slurry. And we want to set this to 180 degrees, 180 degrees, and then save the track. Okay. Oh my goodness. Really? How did you screw that up? Stupid. Stupid game. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay. Um. Field 68 slurry. Oh, there we go. I think I had must have loaded the other thing. Okay, that looks good, actually. I think that's, that's what we want right there. 
All right, so let's lock this in and lower this and get going. It's pretty darn close to the edge. Let's make sure it's actually covering it. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, this is going to take a few passes, of course, but it's only going to take a few passes. <laughs> I, I, what I meant to say is it's going to take a few trips back and forth. Now, one of the things we can do is you can actually use slurry tankers and load them up and bring them out to the field so that the tractor and the applicator doesn't have to keep going back and forth. Um, so that's something we might look into, but probably this time I'm just going to have AutoDrive drive the tanker back to the biogas plant to load back to the field, and then I'll come in and, and continue, resume it, and wash, rinse, repeat in that way uh, for now. Just because I don't want to spend a whole ton of money uh, working on this. And while it's going back for its first load, we will... Here, let's stop that for a second. Uh, we'll go get our eggs sold and make a bunch of money and finish paying off the bank. Let's turn those lights back on. All right, I'm going to do this uh, curve myself here. It's kind of hard to get it perfect, but... In fact, why don't we... No, I don't think we need to do a headland down here. we got enough room to maneuver. Okay. Uh, let me make sure that, that we got that corner there. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. All right. We'll get it turned around and back up the field, but it's already down to 24%. But we're covering, covering a massive amount area, too, so it's working out pretty good overall. Just back this up a little bit. I'm sure glad I have guidance steering for this because it's really hard to see, you know, where you... How come that's not... There we go. Okay. Uh, you know, where you've covered with the, the foliage on the field... You can if you hit the light just right, but it's it's it is not easy to do. Okay, so we should be off to a good oh we missed a little tiny spot there, but you know what I'm not too worried about that. Just about run out. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and done. Okay, let's fold this up. Turn auto drive off for now, and we will just pick up where we left off after he gets back with the next load. So based upon this, it's going to take uh, one, two, probably th two, two and a half to three more loads probably to do the entire field, I'm guessing. Okay. Let's get him over here back on the course. That, I, I thought I tried that once before and it didn't work, but let's just try it again and see what happens. The problem is I can get the I can get the tanker to drive to the load area at the biogas plant, but it wasn't actually loading it. Um, well, this needs to be on digestate, but I had that on digestate too. Maybe if we turn this off and then back on to reset it, we'll see what happens. Okay, so while he's doing that, it uh, looks like our... Cotton harvester is doing good, and it's dropped off its first bale in the corner there. So we could actually go pick that one up, I suppose, while we're here. This trailer will hold two of these big square cotton bales.
Oh, it's going to suck it up in there. <laughs> it wasn't quite lined up, but hey, we'll take it. We'll take it. Okay. We'll just wait for the next bale. Now, we want to go to our pickup truck. And we're going to pick up some eggs and make some money. We'll get all the eggs out of the warehouse, and then there will be a few more over at the chicken coops for us to pick up, too. Forty-two thousand liters of eggs. Nice. Total of thirty-one pallets. Get these loaded, and then we'll have to spit some more out. And seven more pallets. Very good. Okay, let's run over to the chicken coops and get the eggs over there. Oh, and we got the lag too. Okay, let's see who has the best price on eggs. Uh, November is the best month to sell eggs, uh, as you can see here. And the best price looks like, mm, not my bakery doesn't count, which is too bad because that's a good price. Uh, Mama Joe's Farmer's Market for $14.09. And the price is dropping, so let's get them over there. There goes our slurry tanker. You know, I'll bet that worked because before it was just stopping there and telling me it was there without loading. So that's a good sign. We'll see once we get back out of the field, though. Okay, let's make some bank, you guys. Look at that money going up. It's a beautiful sight, isn't it? All right, 57 and 16 is 73, 74,000-ish. Pretty good. Anytime we make 70,000 or more on eggs, I'm happy. That is good. In fact, you know what? Let's go into here and pay the rest of the bank off so we get them out of our hair and that still leaves us 70 grand on top of that I'll take it okay so while I am hooked up to the flatbed trailer why don't we go grab the wool and then um, well no actually here let's just park over here Lots of things to try and manage, so it's a matter of, okay, what's the very next most efficient thing we need to do? Or thing, next thing we need to do to be as efficient as possible. Okay, so we will come back to you and finish up. I want to get back to the slurry spreader. Okay, look at that. It actually filled it. That's fantastic. Okay, so it was basically... Um, pick up and deliver that made that work this time. I don't know why I couldn't get it to work correctly last time, but I couldn't, so. Fantastic. All right, let's keep working on this. We'll get another tank's worth on and then send it for its third to, third fill up. The trick here is getting in the right spot. And again, it's really hard to tell those tire tracks wouldn't disappear that would help tremendously but they do 
<laughs> so, I'm not exactly sure where we were. Uh, we can use the map to help with that, though. Okay, so we need to kind of get more up to this point. The part that is has been spread... Okay, I see my tire tracks right there. Is actually lighter in color. But again, it's very difficult to see that with the foliage. So let's just get it straight like that. And if we just turn course play back on, or not course play, I'm sorry, GPS, that'll get us perfectly lined up. And then it's just a matter of where did we stop? Uh, let's look at the map here. That's pretty doggone close where we are right now. I could just get... I mean, this stuff goes so quickly that I don't want to... I want to... don't want to waste it, you know? As much as possible. But I just can't really tell. So, I think what we'll do is... Let's look at the map again. See, that's the tractor, but the spreader's probably right about here. Or not the spreader, the applicator. I'm going to go forward just a little bit more. And I think that's probably about as good as any. Let's go. Okay, let's look at the map and make sure we didn't leave a gap there. Nope, we're good. Okay. I think that's about as close as we're going to get. <laughs> Okay, and lift. I think we'll probably be able to make this work without much of a headland up here. I'm already caught up in the trees, though. I might end up removing those trees up to the bank of the... Get... Straighten up here, man. Up to the, you know, there's there's a, a big bank where the train tracks are there. And we'll probably just get rid of these trees, have Larry the Landscaper come out and do it or something. Just because they're in the way and they're not doing much. We could even extend the field a little bit further that way too. All right, so let's get lined up. Let's back up. You know what? I'll bet you I could use GPS to back up. No, it doesn't. It doesn't work. Okay. Or I thought might it might lock it in, but it wasn't. Or even if it was, it wasn't working the way I wanted it to work. So. All right. I think that's good. Uh, we need to get the tractor's front end straightened out a little bit more here. Okay, let's do it. We have 45% left. There's something really neat about using the byproduct of your farm to fertilize with. I just I don't know, I just really like it. It feels it feels good, you know? It's more work than granular fertilizer and that big giant spreader we have, but it you know, it's I don't want to say it's free because we had you know, we had to make some major investment to get to the point where we have slurry manure and digestate. But you know, once you're at that point and you can use that for fertilizer, it's just really fun. It's like you're you're being a good conservationist. Okay, there we go. So let's fold her up. Turn off GPS. Get it back on the track and let it go get its next load. Oh, I, I guess I left 140 liters in there, but that's all right. And let it go get another load. Cool. Okay, so 
have you dropped another bale yet? Nope, you're 71%. Okay, so he's doing good. Let's get back to you and get our wool taken care of. The sheep have hay bales, so they're good for feed. I'm not going to worry about them. Uh, we do need to do a mixture for the cows, though. Okay, we'll just top off the spinnery. Let's take a look and see uh, where that's at. Spinnery. Chocked full. Beautiful. Okay, the rest of this can go in the warehouse for se for selling in April. That's our our clothing and wool selling month. Uh, one of the cool things about the sugar too, once we get start getting a stockpile of it, is that I think it's Juneish or so when sugar has the best price. So that just gives us, um, you know, it, it spreads out our selling, so we get more money. No, that's not really a problem now, though. Now that we have both the greenhouses and the biogas plant, we're getting a nice influx of cash every month now. But still, it's kind of nice to stretch it out a little bit so we're not selling everything on January, it seems, all the time. All right, let's drop all this off. Um, I think what we'll do next is let's park the gooseneck here and we'll grab the tank and top off the milk. So we're just kind of doing our farm chores and our other tasks, mixing things up a little bit. This is a variety episode. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. So, there we go. I was going to say, I thought I saw the thingy pop up. I was trying to use the rear view mirror that time to line it up. It worked reasonably well. 13,500 liters of milk. Nice. We will top off the bakery, which won't take very much milk at all, and then we'll put the rest into the dairy. goes our slurry tanker so he'll be ready for us in about two or three minutes yep just took a little squirt there Dairy will take the rest of this, and that'll uh, that'll give it a nice supply of milk, but it still isn't going to even come close to filling it up. I think the dairy holds like a hundred thousand liters. It's like crazy. Uh, yeah, hundred thousand liters. So we got twenty-eight thousand in there, and then the milk. Yeah, in fact, everything's looking good, and the sugar is being distributed too, by the way, to both the dairy and the bakery, which is a beautiful thing. Just what we wanted to see. That's just on the tail end of finishing up the wheat flour. And um, that, we can deactivate that for now until we get more going. This this just moves through so fast it doesn't have a chance to accumulate. And uh, I think we're good to go everywhere else. All right. We'll go park the tanker here, and then we'll run out and do the next pass on the digestate spreading. All right, we got all the way up to the top of the field here. 
We have 2% left, which isn't really enough to bother trying to get lined up with. So we're going to do one more load. Um, it's not going to cover all of this. So we got a little tiny spot there, a little spot there that I missed, and we'll have a strip down here. And I think what we'll do for that is I think we will uh, spread manure on those because uh, I think I can afford to use some of our manure to finish that off. Uh, you know, we can always use granular too, but let's just use the manure this time and I, uh, we'll be okay. We should be okay anyways, hopefully. If I mean, worst comes to worst, if I ran out of manure for the greenhouses, I can always use normal fertilizer for that too. Very good. Okay, so let's get you back going for your last load of digestate. And next thing we want to do, uh, we got another bale to pick up. We could do that, and then we can send this guy up to Johnson's uh, with the first load. My guess is we'll get probably one and maybe a half ish or so more bales out of this field. Sucks it right up on there, doesn't it? <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we're just going to use normal um, AI and send this guy up to Johnson's. And when he gets up there, we'll hop up there and get him unloaded and then bring him back to the field. You good to go? All right, cool. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do next? There goes our slurry tanker. Uh, I think we're done with the pickup. Let's um, <coughs> let's get the rest of this field done so we can get a forage wagon started uh, on the collection. No, actually, hold on. That's not what I want to do. At least not quite yet. Let's jump in the New Holland and get uh, the manure spreader out to the field. That's what we'll do next. Whoa. Oh, that thing's still raised. What in the world? I, I put it away raised. I shouldn't have done that. Silly me. Okay, let's fill up on manure here. We need to um, give the cows some more straw. They're not out, but I want to top them off too when we do their feed. I wouldn't think we'll use all of this manure out there either, but we'll see. There we go, 45,000 liters. It's a lot of poop. <laughs> okay, I think our guy is up at the, uh, up at Johnson's. So let's just park you right here for now. And he's on his way back. Okay, good. And we'll drop off these two bales. Two big old loads of cotton. Took them both. Nice. Okay, so that's 53% transported. send you back to field 70 uh field 70 yeah and why don't you just park right here's good enough 
Very good. Okay, back to the final application of slurry. I'll worry about this later. Okay. Turn that off. And we left off right up in this corner up here. Unfold our wings. Yeah, we, you know what? We might actually end up using all that manure. We'll see. That's still a pretty big swath there. Hopefully the manure can cover that. It's going to be close. I don't want to have to do two passes, as then we will be using more than we want to use. Okay, come on. Oh. I am the king of overcorrecting. <laughs> get, get, get there, get there, get there, get there, get there. Okay, straighten up. Straighten up and fly right. That's what my daddy used to say. He probably still says it. Right, Dad? Straighten up and fly right. Okay. Turn that on. And last pass. Where are we at? Yeah, I don't I don't want to use the applicator for that because we will waste a whole mess of product. So we'll just have to hopefully our manure spreader will cover that last section. I think it will, but we'll wait and see. Put it this way. Even if it doesn't, whatever little tiny strip is left, we're just going to leave it as is because I can't afford to waste any manure either. We don't have a lot of extra because, you know, that's primarily for our greenhouses. And I was able to get through the entire year last year. I don't know if I actually told you guys this. Uh, from the manure that our small cow barn produced, but there wasn't a lot of it extra left over, so that's why I still need to be conservative with it. See, now you can see here, if you look to the left, how the dirt's a little bit lighter color. You can see the difference here, but it just all depends upon, you know, which way the light's shining. And done. Very nice. Okay. We are finished with the digestate application. And so we'll send this guy back to the ranch. Um, actually, here, let's just let's turn in the applicator here. I, I checked with the store, and they said I could leave it on the field. They'd come get it. <laughs> uh yeah okay so we'll disconnect it <coughs> we want it we actually want to turn it in as soon as possible anyway so we're not paying an extra hour for it not that i've been paying that much attention to that okay let's go here uh I'll go here slurry tanks and return okay thank you for your service that was awesome all right, we're going to send you back to the farm and switch you over to forage work um, after we offload the tank. So let's do a set destination and uh, just park like right here in the field somewhere is good. I don't care. Anywhere. Anywhere in the field is good. Okay, now let's jump in the New Holland. You made it back, so that's good. Okay, so we got to go down and do this strip over here. Open up the gate there. And we can, yeah, I can just make out the area here. Oh, look at the <laughs> look at the trailer pushing the tractor. 
Okay, so... Um... Let's just do this. Oh yeah, it's gonna cover it. It's almost like the perfect width, too. Look at that. I could even get in maybe a little bit closer to the left. That is, like, almost perfect. Look at that, man. It's almost as if I planned it that way. I love it. Where's the field at? Yep, look at that. Beautiful. Okay. I'll tell you what, though. Um, I, I think it's about time for us to get the large cow barn because, you know, I would love to be able to support all of our fields with, you know, slurry, digestate, manure, fertilizer. And the only way that's going to happen is if we get more cows. So I'm tentatively, no promises, but I am tentatively planning on getting the large cow barn um, as probably our next really big purchase. All right, nice. Now we had a couple other little spots here to touch up. Let's see if we can find those. Uh, you can definitely tell the difference where the manure was spread. That's that's easier to to see. Okay, we had a spot down on this end of the field, just a little tiny spot right over here. Probably not even worth messing with, but we might as well. I'm just going to have one heck of a time actually seeing where it is. Okay, I'm going to get over this this way a little bit. Oh, I think I can actually see it. There's just a little dark spot right here. The front of my tractor is over it right there. Okay, so if we just go pull forward a little bit and do a little squirt right here. Did that get it? Huzzah. Okay, and then just this little spot up there. And we're still going to be able to take over half of the trailer load back to the bunker, which is great because we're going to need it, I think or the greenhouses when the time comes. All right, so that spot's probably right around in this neck of the woods. Okay, if we turn and head north, just trying to see if I can spot it. It'll be a thin, dark strip. I can't really see it from here. Where are we at? Okay, we should be r almost right where we need to be for it. If we got out of the tractor, could we see it better? Not really. Oh, I know how we could tell, actually. Here, if we look at the field, wherever it says 50% fertilized, that's where the strip is. That's all says 100%. 95, 86, 95. It must be this 86 area. Right, maybe right here, I'm thinking. So let's just go forward here. Are we pointing that direction? Yeah, okay. Let's give it a squirt right here. And then take a look. Yep, okay. And then we want to back. Oh, you know what? I can kind of see it now, actually. Because you can see, you know, where the end of the manure strip is. It's just a little tiny spot right over here. And then a little bit more over here. I know I'm I'm probably being a little too anal retentive about this, but <laughs> I want I want to get it done. There we go. Look at that. 
All right, field 68 is fully fertilized with two applications of fertilizer. We're going to get a nice yield off this field. Beautiful. All right. So let's uh, let's take this guy back. Um, you know, I don't know if I can tip this out of here. Now that I think about it, let's, uh, well, let's get it back to the bunker and we'll see. That might be a, a little bit of a sticky wicket because I'm, if I can't tip it, then that means I can't put it directly into the greenhouses from this trailer. This trailer is actually a dual roll. It's a manure spreader or a tipper, but you have to change the configuration for it in the shop. And I don't know if you can do that when the manure's in it. I suppose we could save the game first and then see. Because it seems to me like I did try and tip this once before and I couldn't do it. Because it's configured as a spreader. Yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we save the game first and then we'll see if we can reconfigure it without losing the manure. So we can tip it back into the bunker. Or I could even just leave it in the trailer and tip it directly into the greenhouses when the time comes. Let's try it. Here, let's try a different experiment, actually, first. If we just go up to this greenhouse. See, it's not giving me the trigger to tip, and that would normally be I or control I, and it's not working. Yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll try that first plan, then we'll save it and see if we can reconfigure it. Save the game. Customize. Configuration standard. Well, it's okay, it's already got the manure spreader, so we want to set it back to standard. Oh, that's not going to cost us anything? Okay. Configuration has been changed. Now, do we still have our poop in there? We do. Look at that. All right. So, oh. So now we should be able to just tip uh, right into the greenhouses. However, I don't think I want to use this for that now that I think about it because it doesn't have a, a hatch door and it takes a lot longer if. But let's just confirm that it will work, though. Yep, look at that. You know what? Actually, that's not going to take too long to do. Okay, yeah, we can just leave it in this trailer. Sure. And then, you know, next time we need to do manure spreading, we'll just bring it over to the shop and reconfigure it for that, and we'll be good to go. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, I want you to go back over to the main yard. Uh, no, actually, I don't. I want you to stay here because we're going to get you set up with the forage wagon. Except for we, we still need to take them to the main yard because I want to put the V-Rigs on both of these guys. Okay, I think I'm going to just stage him right here for the moment until I'm ready to use him. Okay, let's get into the fent, get our slurry tanker parked, still has 28% in it, but we, we're we going to just leave it in there, I don't know how to get that out of there, I, I don't even know if you can, so it'll just have to sit in there for next time. We need to put some more bond silage in this one, so we just have to pull right up in between these two tanks. And then press R, and boom. There we go. So much nicer than messing with the... Having to buy the pallets and all that from the store. I love... I love having those little containers over there for that stuff. You know, in hindsight, though... Um, in the future, when I do something like that, I'm going to put them a little further apart. So it's easier to get, get to them. But we make it work, man. Okay, let's get the V-Rake. The other V-Rake. Alright, I'm just going to park 
you here for now so you're out of the way too until we're ready for you. Okay, how are you doing? You're at 40% full. You got another bale down. <coughs> so let's get that bale. I doubt he's going to get another full bale off this field. It's going to be close though. That's done. Okay, let's feed the cows. I got 3% left in here. All right. I'm not sure how much silage I have left in the stave silo. There should be, we want, we want to put about 6,500 liters in here. I just got to watch the thingy down below there. There we go, 6588. Uh, what is left in here, just out of curiosity? Concrete stave silo, which is back up here. Oh yeah, we still have 16,000 and a half liters in there. Plenty, plenty, plenty. We probably won't put more in there until our first or maybe even our second hay cutting next season. It'll probably last until then. I love doing it that way though, then instead of messing with the silage bunker or even the bales for that matter. It's just more efficient. Okay, so we'll park you there and jump into our telehandler. two hay bales out of the 2.4 meter variety and one straw bale. You know, we're, we're not, actually might need more straw to, for the blower too, but let's just start with that because I have some in the blower. I just don't know how much. Don't remember. Turn that on so we can see our ratios. I'm doing all this first person stuff today without my head tracker on. I have it, I just don't have it turned on. And you have to completely close down the game and restart it for it to work, so I didn't bother with it. Okay, so we only want to put in this just a tad beyond the max. Let me do a game save here because I've screwed this up before. And then you basically lose the whole load. It turns into chaff, which you can still convert to silage later, but that's not really what you want to do. Okay, so we'll watch the meter on the left and we'll stop this at about 31% ish. There we go, 31.2 should work. And then the rest will be hay. This is fun. I always enjoy doing this. Um, I am planning on buying the 
auto feeder cow barn when we get the big one with the robotic feeder and then that we just have to load three bays with hay straw and silage and then and we are going to have to use mineral feed too because it's required and then it just basically automatically feeds the cows it's really pretty slick if you haven't seen it but it's going to cost us over 700 grand to buy that sucker so it's going to be expensive Okay, let's go park the telehandler. I don't, well, actually, we're going to have to do two mixtures. Let's see, how low are the cows? No, we won't have to do two mixtures. They're so a little bit over half full, so we're good there. And they're full. Okay. Nope, not that. Goodness gracious, what you trying to do? Butcher the cows before their time? Speaking of which, my cows are really old. <laughs> I have never, I've never switched them out. But you know what, though? Because they're dairy cows, I mean, I know it's not very realistic in real life, but... I don't think dairy cows lose production, milk production, as they get older. I could be wrong about that. I mean, I haven't noticed them lose any. If they're, you know, if you're, if they're beef cows, then you definitely don't want them to get too old, or they will start losing value. But I don't know. That's something we'll we'll probably swap them out when we when we get the big barn anyway. But yeah, that. You know, we've had those cows for what, ten in-game years, maybe, or more. <laughs> we haven't even, haven't even switched them out. Those are some old cows, man. Got it a little too close. Whoop! That's even too closer. We have some straw in there, but I don't know if it'll be enough to fill the whole barn. We'll find out here in a moment. That cow's having a straw shower. That's not really my idea of a good time. I don't know about y'all, but... Get the front stalls, or at least pretend like we are. Okay, good. We got them completely fill, filled up without running out of straw. Fantastic. Okay, so they're full with straw, full with food, and they're happy cows. We've already gotten a lot done today, but we're not done. We've still got to get all the hay cut and put it taken care of. And we have to finish up that cotton harvest, too. Okay, we'll put the McCormick back in the cow barn. Uh, no, actually we won't, because we're going to need to use it for rolling at the very end of the hay. So we might as well drive it over by the rollers. And I'm just going to park him underneath the oak tree for now. Alright, let's see how our cotton's doing. It should be getting really close, if not all the way finished. Yeah, just about there. And he's 91% full. I don't, yeah, th there's no way there's enough cotton left on this field <coughs> to get another full bale. But that's still almost a full bale, so that'll be good. Okay, well, he's, uh, yeah, he's going to be done, like, in seconds. And then all of this stuff on the diagonal... I guess I should probably get it. I don't know if it's going to really be worth getting it, but I think I will just so we can actually complete the job, you know. Uh, so, yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to stop you and take over from here.
it's pretty nice though you know to be able to do a contract on the largest field on the map for cotton and have the AI do 95% of the work. Granted, we do have to pay them, but not too much. We still definitely get the bulk of the profit from it. This thing's dirty. It's been doing work. I've thought about if it's even worth getting into cotton at all in this game. I mean, you guys have seen, if you've been following all along, the series all along, you've seen how easy it is to do sheep. I mean, it's just a piece of cake. <laughs> you know, you make the initial investment, you throw the sheep in, give them hay or grass once in a while, and that's all you got to do. And then they just pop out wool like crazy, which you can then, of course, you know, turn into clothing, which is what you want to do with it. Because clothing's the single most valuable item in the game as far as production goes. So why would you even bother with cotton? It's so much more work and it's so expensive to get into it. I don't know. It seems to me like maybe something needs to be balanced out there a little bit more. Or maybe that's just the way life is. I mean, I like doing cotton. It's kind of fun. You know, but it just it doesn't really add up. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I believe that is it. So let's drop this bale off right behind the trailer. In fact, I wonder if we can directly transfer it in there just for funsies. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I love it. Oh, nope. Fold up. And we are finished with you, Mr. Cotton Harvester. Thank you for your service. Farmer said we can just leave this in the field. He'll come get it later. bring you back down and send you up to Johnson's for the final drop off. And yeah, I'm not I'm not going to try and keep any of this cotton. It's really hard to do with these large bales anyways. Cuz what ends up happening is you keep more than you're supposed to and then you get a little bit of a penalty, which is not a, necessarily a bad thing because it all evens out, but it's just better to drop it all off since we don't actually need it anyway. Okay. When he gets up there, we'll hop up there and finish the cotton harvest. In the meantime, I'm going to I'll get this field going here. Uh, or get it finished mowing so I can get the forage wagons going on it. Okay, we're going to stop right here, and I'll come back to this later uh, because our guy's up at Johnson's waiting to drop off the cotton. Here we go. There we go. Look at that. We made $9,705 um, off of the extra cotton and 12000 and something off of the uh, contract. Yeah, 12116 Let's collect on that. And there we go. All right. So that's pretty, pretty good money uh, considering we didn't really have to do a whole lot. And... Uh, 
Yeah, so that pretty much gets us everything done today that we need to do, except for, of course, the hay itself. I'm going to let you guys go here. I'll finish out the hay and then finish out November. And the plan as of right now will be to bring you back uh, on December 1st. We will have some more products uh, to sell in December. It should be a pretty good month. And we will go from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share out the video. And remember, every opportunity you get, run over street signs with your big M mower. I'm just kidding, kids. You should never actually run over street signs in real life. That's not a good idea because it could cause a car accident. All right. <laughs> See you guys. Bye-bye. Bad influence.